Hello, I'm Adrian Hansen. I'm a developer for the Collins VR Trainer. The Collins VR Trainer is a collection of Collins products put together in a game engine uh, and then run through a virtual reality headset using OpenXR standards. Um, so to demonstrate, we've got the out the window visuals where we can increase cat conditions to decrease visibility uh, and that can demonstrate uh, the HUD and its ability to kind of um, cut through that low visibility on top of that. It's running on the Collins uh, flight simulation software, so it totally runs, it's completely flyable. Uh, so it's a lot of these Collins products together, uh, as well as a fully modeled cockpit that you can interact with using just hand tracking. So this headset doesn't use controllers, uh, so you could run procedures or flows using only your hands. Well, Rich, if you'd like to jump in, sure. we can set you up so, for approach. So, Adrian, what model of aircraft is this? This is a 737NG. So this is a device, this right? Obviously, it's on hand. Pro. Okay. Uh, Meta's, one of Meta's most recent headsets. Can it use the new Apple? Uh, if we, <laughs> if we add it. Um, you try one? It's built on OpenXR, so the idea is that you should be able to use um, any headset that you want to. Apple okay. is probably going to be a unique case, but we in, intend to include whatever headset you want to use. That would be interesting because if you're using the Apple headset, you can actually integrate, because I can't see you, right? Right. The Apple headset can actually see you as, you know, my co-captain here. Actually, you're the captain, I'm the trainee, <laughs> so I shouldn't say uh, anything else other than, I um, shouldn't elevate my uh, expertise here at all. <laughs> uh, all right, pilot says, get ready for an approach. Can I fly this, here? Uh, yep, so if you stand and look straight ahead, I'm gonna recenter you. Oh, I see, okay. So oh, good, go. thanks, because yeah. that was over there, all right. Oh, that's um, amazing you're able to recenter like that. Would you like to do the throttle as well? or would Sure, you like where's the on? throttles? So oh, there they are. Down there, if you make a fist around that throttle, you should be able to grab it and pull it back and forth. Okay, let me just try this. So make a full fist on it. Or come back with kind of your hand open and then come down on it and make a fist. Like that? Or like, oh, like this? Yeah. So oh, wait, I've got speed on, so it won't let you grab it. Now you should ah, grab it. Grab it. Okay. All right. There you go. Um, okay. It's going to right. be your aircraft in three, two, one. Okay. So let me try this. Pull back a little bit to get into a better. Okay, so any pretty good power setting I should be at? Um, this approach, you should be set up. up uh, it can more or less glide itself in. On okay, this approach, so I can just take my hands off the throttles? Um, you can keep using the throttle if you want. You can also turn speed on by just pressing the MCP button as well. Where is that one? Uh, so if you look to your right on the MCP, uh, it's going to be the second square button. On the where? So look up in the center, kind Oops. of the Woo, between we went up the. We climbed. We climbed. We've got a lot of power in this in this NG. Okay, where's the? Okay, where do I find the MCP? Uh, I go so, to the left. Uh, yeah, off. it's in the middle of the cockpit, under the window, and above the de the like center. Yeah, up here. There. So that uh, the second square button is going to be one? speed. Uh, no, the second from the uh, left. Uh, so if you go over, click the... It's hard to find there. it here. Almost there? That's here? it, right there. Okay, so now I can just fly it. So now you can just fly it. Okay, <laughs> that's it. It's a heavy plane, I gotta use two hands. Yeah, it is a... Well, now, it's now a it, will it control the speed now? Yes, so it's in auto, auto throttle speed. now. Okay, auto throttle for the FMS land. Okay. <laughs> so now I keep the pip in there, right? Yep. All right, and I see the deceleration on the left, the carrot. Correct? Yep. Okay. Got 20. Okay, pull up just a little bit. There we go. Ooh. Very nice. Okay, got a little bit of rudder pedal. Where's my rudder pedal? <laughs> we Where's can't include rudder pedals. We oh, have them at a lot of shows. But wow. This show's just the, uh, the yoke for now. Um, we can... Uh, add or take away any physical controls that we want. Everything can either be virtually controlled like that throttle or we can add a physical throttle uh, and just feed that right to the simulator. So, so if I come over here, right, yep. where my flaps are, so it did that automatically or did it lowered it down? Uh, it might have lowered it automatically. It must have. So if I want to move them, I come over to the control, correct? Yeah, this one might snap. Yeah, this one's got a little bit of a bug. So if Good. you release it, that's and okay. Grab it again, it retracted fast. There you go. <laughs> All right, and then I got my stabilizer trim, uh, which you can use the trim buttons on the left of the yoke as well, and that should affect. There we go. I can see it spinning yep. on both sides. All right, and then I've got these are 
stabilizer trim, yep. correct? Yes. If I just touch it, or how do I get them up? Uh, like a normal finger? switch. So uh, you do got to use, yeah, just the one finger. So come in kind of lower. All right. And activate yeah. it. So this is a pretty cool, so if I say, all right, people are complaining it's too cold back there in the cabin. <laughs> Do you know where the temperature control is? Oh uh, man, I added all of these for about two months. Uh, I cannot remember which one's temperature control. What about coffee? I want coffee. Uh, okay. He's got so, to be a coffee. Okay, so button. I've got my wing anti-ice here. Yep. I can turn that off, let's say I don't need it. I'm just playing with the controls. So the switches that kind of have that fatter tip, um, Right. Just for demonstration, the ones with the thicker tip, you're going to pinch to grab them. Okay. So for the knobs, you would also pinch those with two fingers. So if they, but they have to do the highlight, whether I, like panel and brightness, I can't touch, right? Uh, yeah, so come at it with a pinch instead of a poke. Oh, yeah, I see. So there you go. Your hand will kind of snap to it. Oh, I see. Yes, you, you get so, used to where it is, I guess. Yeah, pull your hand back and then come at it and pinch it. Let me see if I get this one. Cockpit breaker lights. Yeah, think about it like you're pinching onto okay. the object. So your hand is wide, and then when you're over the object, pinch down on it. Oh, I see, yeah, so you can, you can activate it, like here. Yeah. Oh, so you have to come at. So it, uh, it close your fingers together, too. Okay. Yeah, so. When I grab it, right? Yeah, so Correct. open your hand. Yeah. Come at, hover over it, and then pinch your fingers together. A little, a little faster. Oh, okay. Yeah. It takes a little getting used to once you get there. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, so you can poke. Okay. Buttons are easy. You can press a button. There you go. I see that light. So that light. It tests the, the lights in through there. So the knobs are a little different. If I want to disconnect these. So kind of grab that. Again, oh, I see. Pinch. Click. So oh, I that see. one, yeah, you oh, pull up. Oh, perfect. Oh, and then let go by releasing your hand. Wow. And then you can flip that switch. Oh. And then you would pull it back down. Uh, you can't push it back. Yeah, you got to grab it. So a lot of this is also us watching and seeing what people are most comfortable doing and then trying to replicate those hand positions. Sure. So, that so if I come over here, for example, and if I grab that, and normally what I would do at least, and of course, I'm left-handed, so I'm a little different because I'm using my right, but I would go up and I'd grab it like this. Yeah, it should. And so with my hand like it's this. It's interesting that it's not giving you any grabs. It did occasionally when I came in there and, and acted, and, and I'm not sure what you guys see other than the space where I'm moving. Close your fingers on the way you guys do it. Yeah, it's kind of looking for like a smooth pinch motion. Like a little, you're doing that. So, like that. See, it's weird. I know, uh, yeah, the buttons seem to be fine. Oh, so there's a tendon. It's more gen. like authority. Like, grab this close one. Like, I do, but up. if I grab it here. Oh, wait a minute, my yeah, co-pilot was coming in my view. Up hands. Exactly. Yeah. There. There you go, you got one. So your hand will kind of highlight once you have it grabbed. There. Sources. See, I'd go up there. Oh, yeah. There you oh, go. Got it. But what I do, whenever I move a knob in a cockpit, because I fly a lot of different planes, I'll always go there and verify it, hold it, and then turn it. Mm, okay. I won't quickly grab it, because we bounce between a lot of airplanes. I always want to verify buttons. So I'll come over here and say, okay, I want to verify that, and then hit it. Boom, which I just did there. Activate. Same thing here, I like to ver I, I, I come up to the knob and I verify that's the function I want, and then I turn it. I see. Yeah, it is just not like in your hand. <laughs> that is weird. The HUD brightness. Yep, so pinch, just pinch down on that. Okay. So, so I'm left handed. Yeah. Come at it. Get, yeah, oh, look at so that. that is wow, gonna act even, as a look at that. It even shows my watch. You can actually do a lot of the controls that I have down here. If you pull your uh, left palm up and look at it, uh, tap oh, the IA right. menu button. Oh, with my right hand? With your right hand. So kind of press through it. Push, it's going to push down and resist your finger. Oh, you I see. It. Oh, that's right. That's what Tigger So now you have control right? of airports, runways, aircraft, weather conditions, visual systems, and then you can also access um, some training scenarios or procedures and flows.
So airports. So those are the ones that you can pick. Uh, yeah, we have a couple lists of them, but we also can add, you know, airports on customer request as well. And this is again, it's all call-in systems that we're bringing in. Sure. So aircraft, and that's where you would pick the aircraft. Oh, I see you have to go all the way. Pick there, where you're at, push back, left, right, three miles. So if I come back here and I say I want to do a like three mile final, push that button. And that's right. when it loaded like you did before, correct? Yep, and it'll set you back up. And then you can look at your left palm again, and there's an orange button that says flight freeze. Right, and I can If you press that, that, you'll be going. But don't I want to do, I would, do I still have the speed I can control? turn that on for I have you. to turn that on now? Yeah. Here, it's on, right? I, I, I can turn it oh, on you did. that okay. side too, yeah. Thank you. Well, that's good crew resource management. <laughs> So okay. kind of, yeah, there you go. Okay, so now it's flying, correct? Yep. Correct. Okay. And if I put auto throttles again, what you on? And it'll do the auto. Okay, so now. The HUD's amazing. It really is. Yeah, it's definitely the, the showpiece. A lot of the common, we fly Fusion, right? So, mm -hmm. in, um, done it in the King Air and the Citation series. I also was on Collins' uh, advisory board for the Fusion. Mm. Um, so it's amazing, yeah, so you can see all that through there. I can correlate with my PFD if I don't want the HUD. Yeah, so our um, heads down is not hooked up here. Um, we have other Collins projects working towards a, a HUD down that'll run to the game engine okay, too. So, so move that's... it to the left of the center line. Tigri will remind me to make sure I'd stay on the center we line. We can see what you'd really, the rough conditions you'd have. Wow. Yeah, I like seeing the lights. It's a better. Yeah, a little bit. I'd like to be able to use a little bit of rudder, maybe. Okay, that's 50, 40, a little bit right of center line. There we go. Nice. Right of center, well, I'm right of center line. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That is really cool. And it would be interesting because if you were with the Apple, it could be distracting in some ways, but if you use that other vision that they have, if that ever does work, then you can actually do that and you can almost do it with a crew. Yeah, so pass-throughs also, I don't think it's going to be exclusively Apple either. We might see it on headsets like this as well. Uh, I think there's there's a race to have the most features between the VR companies, so um, pass-through is definitely on the uh, on the bucket list. That's pretty amazing. Oh, to show them some. Uh, yeah. Can I have a meal, please? I'd like. Can I'd like a meal? And... <laughs> so this is really good, yeah, for procedures because you're. Wow. So you look up here. I mean, it really is incredible. Tigre exper experienced this yesterday. This is really phenomenal because we're here. We are. We're in the MBAA base exhibit hall in Las Vegas. And I know there's nothing above us other than girders and everything else, but I can look up here and I see the entire panel, right? In really amazing fidelity. Over here, I see my map light. Over here, the HUD, the left window. Hi, folks. Um, I see the ground crew down there getting ready. Uh, and it's, it's really incredible. The fidelity of this is just amazing to be able to do this. The other thing it gives you is a capability, like there are other graphical flight simulators and so forth for people to to train even at home before they come to to sim training or to try things out. It's really incredible. And then of course, then you can just change the aircraft, yep. the design of what you want to be able to do. And so I know that here, this is really my controls. Uh, that's explained, this is uh, uh, EP, as our generator for this one, EP. But really, I'm here. And I can see the real control yoke. Of course, the one I'm touching is down here, <laughs> right between my legs, actually. And then down here, I've got the QR, QRH. Which we could turn into something you could pull out of the sleeve and, and pick up. If you sure, want. my uh, that'd be great. Yeah. iPad, come up, watch Netflix. <laughs> some, internal, uh, some internal Netflix. Yeah. Exactly, right. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to be able to do that. I've got an oxygen mask over here. Got my tiller over here for steering on the on the ground. It's pretty phenomenal. Thank you. Um, yeah, and then we also have when you do flow training, there's um, eye tracking in, 
included. So a lot of those flows you're not interacting with things, but you're checking states. And so yeah, I spent time in your next generation flight lab. Oh yeah. Gave them feedback on some of the, the new avionics that you're looking at. It's quite impressive. Yeah, Collins does some pretty No, pretty it's impressive really stuff. amazing. So what are next steps and roadmap for y'all? Um, looking at multi-user, um, we are, so the entire airline industry is very interested in virtual reality being used as a, uh, a tool to get accredited hours uh, for flight training. It's not ever gonna replace a full flight simulator, but it could make the time you spend in that full flight simulator much more valuable since it's very limited. So for us working towards accreditation, um, getting this to a point where uh, it can kind of be a standardized tool for training uh, would be really exciting for us. So that's what we're looking forward to. Yeah, it's fascinating, right? Having done, I think I was looking, I've done 50 check rides over the years, 50 or 60, last time I checked. And those include recurrent training, et cetera, in the jets and independently. And the sims are great, awesome, no question about it. But when I go and learn a new jet, frequently what I'll do is I will set up and I will go to like a GFS at Flight Safety, Graphical Flight Simulator, and I'll spend hours and hours just going through my checklist. Mm -hmm. Just going through the checklist. And it's all graphs, it's just screen. To be able to have something like this would make it even even more powerful yeah, because then you could fly it because a lot of those are, are right, just Right, you can go right panel. to take off. Exactly. Um, so, so I'll show, I'll also, I'll show you a, um, we have a flow that goes from, uh, uh, take off, or it goes from taxi to takeoff in the flow, which is really exciting that it, it can do both. So we have a taxi to takeoff. You have assessment options, so you can kind of customize how you want to, your experience to work. Um, so with this flow, we have explanations for what you're supposed to do. If something is set to the wrong state, you're required to set it to the right state. So these um, on auto. So yeah, this is the kind of come down on it. Um, so we go there, MCB altitude to 5,000. And so this is an example of eye tracking. I'm not touching anything. I'm just looking at the object and I'm supposed to set it to simplex. You're doing great for your first time. <laughs> um, so here's another eye tracking example. Um, you want to skip eye tracking it's very optional so the and eye so, tracking looks obviously where your eyes are and then for a certain period of time it knows that that focus has now changed to that object yes so it's it's tracking your actual pupil location and then it's mm -hmm. saying great you're looking at this that time is also we can make that a variable amount of time it can be really quick or slower and you can also turn eye tracking off if you just want to become like very familiarized with the flow you don't have to have that training going so are you going to turn uh, call and Call and repeat, or any of those. Um, yeah, as we um, as we work with airlines to get this to the place we want it to be, we will probably have um, a, you know as as airlines ask for things, we want to add what is most um, important to kind of the greater airline industry. Um, what's going to apply to the most people? So, PF two, we definitely will have callouts. Um, you'll also have an instructor kind of watching you as well, so you can do take off here. It's amazing how you step up, your head is getting closer to it. Uh, yeah. And so I can I can kind of fake it here. Does it matter whether you're, in terms of the hand movement to grab a control whether you're right or left handed? Uh, you grab the controls? I think most controls are, um, I mean, a lot, a lot of these controls right now are just right handed, but they are as easy as just adding a left handed option to each of the control sets. It's kind of just something that we are You know what to. might so be yes, interesting? You can make, all of these, well, I think he stole my hand. But. Sure, because when you're on the right seat. You'd right, be using you, your left hand, right? Correct. So yeah, it's it's just, um, the hands are identical like to the game engine. It doesn't really need to know the difference between them. Um, so all of these interactions are as easy as just adding an alternative hand. Um, so yeah. It's interesting on the grabbing of the controls. Of course, you've done this a lot, and Tigre was very good at it. For me, when I grab the controls, it's a little bit different, right, with my, yeah. hand, my hand movement. It'd be interesting is, if you personalized it to the pilot who was training, just for that session, right? So you say, okay, the initial part of this, you're gonna start this session, 
Let's just check your hands position. Let's her left hand, right yeah. hand. Check your hand. The dwell time on a, on a thing. How he how they put right. their fingers together. Let's see what is the pose we're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. And and just do that in their profile. And then you can actually save it in their name if you have pilots coming back the same thing, right? But you log in, you do that, yep. and you make that kind of adjustment for that for that particular person. That way, you're not going. Well, let's make the knob. Yes. Oh wait, no, that nuts. everyone grabs it like this. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's too long for Adrian, not enough for Rich, just about right for Tigre, and then you can. So then, if I come here and I touch it, right, it, because it's just different people's. Like yeah. I have to confirm because if I don't, as I mentioned, we'll fly four or five different models of jets with totally different panels. Autopilot's a good example, right? The autopilot panel for your equipment. It's totally different on a Premier yep. than it is on a CJ, mm -hmm. right? Other series other than the four, and they're different. So I always go over and I confirm before I turn the knobs. Right. If somebody's just flying one platform, it's a little different. Yeah, but and that's... So, so you kind of build that up. But it's, it's a very impressive. You built amazing things. Thank you. I appreciate that. We appreciate your symbology. Um, yeah, it's great. Well, it was fun working on it. That was years ago. When I was starting as a college professor in Oregon, Oregon Tech Flight Dynamics said, hey, we heard about you. You want to come up? I said, sure. He came up and he said, you're a pilot. None of us are pilots. <laughs> that's great. And they said, well, pilots always have big watches. And I didn't have a watch on. So the next time I came up, I came up with a big one. But then I could give them the input and then I you know, wrote the, a number of the Fortran uh, subroutines. It was all in Fortran at that time. We had about 1,800. And then uh, I had laser gyros and and so forth. Huge combined, it was a massive amount of electronics at that time. Congratulations. Thank you, you very crazy. much. I mean, it really Appreciate is cool. It. It's very neat. Thank you very much. Thanks for enjoying the Collins VR Trainer. Mm -hmm.